I'm going to give you a few tips on how to start when you do the first lesson plan for EC to 6 generalist or special education. You're going to be doing fourth grade math, which is chapter 111. When you write your objective, it should be the TEKS, chapter 11, 5B. And then you write your TEKS exactly as it's written here. And then you're going to go ahead and come up with an objective. Now, the objective needs to be two lines maximum. And you notice that it's several lines here. You're going to have to come up with just two. So you're going to have to make it a little bit smaller and more direct. But students, at the end of this lesson, are supposed to represent problems using an input-output table and numerical expressions to generate a number pattern that follows a given rule, representing the relationship of the values in the resulting sequence and their position in the sequence. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's take a look and find out what you're going to be doing here. For some of you, you learned this a long time ago and you still remember it. For some of you, it is different. Let's look back at the STAR assessment, and they have a collection of release tests. So let's look at fourth grade, the fourth grade math test. So I see here question number 33. The table below shows the total number of computers in different numbers of classrooms in a school. You have the total number of computers and you have the number of classrooms. It looks like that if you have three, if you have three classrooms that you will then have 21 school computers. Six classrooms will have 42 12 classrooms will have 48, and 15 will have 105. I'm not sure which one here is the input and which is the output, but there's either multiplication, division, addition, subtraction going on here. The student will have to decide that. And you're going to have to come up with a rule, perhaps, for the relationship between these. Which of the following describes the relationship in the table? Is it the total number of computers minus 19? equals the number of classroom, or is the total number of computers times three equals the number of classrooms, or is it the total number of computers minus 90 equals the number of classrooms, or is it the total number of computers times seven equals the number of classrooms? Well, instead of trying all of these, it'll be much easier to just know the answer and that you find the relationship between these and you come up with a rule. Here's another question that is very similar. The table below shows the amount of money Hector earned and spent during each of four months. May, $27, and amount spent, $12. June, $39, amount spent, $24, etc. Which of the following describes the relationship in the table? And you can see the choices here. It's much easier to come up with a rule. Is it subtraction? From here to here, this is lower on this side, so if you're going from this is your input and this is your output, then you would have a subtraction or a division. These are questions they are asking fourth graders on the STAR exam. A number sequence is shown below. And so you have a box times 25 equals, which table shows the numbers that correctly complete the number sentence. And so here you can have input, output, and there's a pattern here. There's a pattern from nine down to whatever that is and down from 200 down to whatever that is and you can try to figure that out and here is also but the question is what times 25 equals what and of course this is one of the easier ones and the number would be if you had one times 25 it would equal 25. then if you had three times 25 that would equal if you had four times 25 which of these seems to fit the pattern that we're seeing here? So input output table, you try to find these out. Which is represented? This could be input and that could be output. Notice that you have input, you have your rule, which is times 25 equals the output. Let's take a look and see at some YouTube videos of people that explain this. And you can find these on YouTube. You can find other ones as well that will explain this concept better and how you could teach it to your students. Now, remember that what's going to happen here is represent problems using an input-output table and numerical expressions to generate a number pattern that follows a given rule representing the relationship of the values and the resulting sequence and their position in the sequence. Remember that your students, and then for your lesson plan, they will be working in groups. Remember that they are not solving problems. What they are doing is that they are creating a problem that others can solve. 
that's a higher level of Bloom's taxonomy. It's a lower level if all they're doing is solving. It doesn't say here that they are solving problems. It says they are representing problems using input and output table and numerical expressions to generate a number pattern that follows a given rule representing the relationship of the values in the resulting sequence and their position in the sequence. This objective or this TEKS does nothing about solving these kind of problems. This is generating them. They are representing a problem. So that's what I'm expecting on the lesson plan. Now let's look at a couple of the YouTube videos. Okay, introduction, introduction to input output machines tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about input output machines. An input output machine is basically just a way to talk about the relationship between patterns. Relationship between patterns. So in this example, this is our input output machine and this is our input output chart. So if we had input numbers starting at 1 and increasing by 1 going down our chart, and then say we had a number like plus 6 in our input output machine, that would just help us to figure out what the output numbers are. So any number and operation that's in the input output machine is the number and operation that's going to act upon our input to get our output. For example, 1 plus 6 is 7, 2 plus 6 is 8, and so on and so forth. So we fill out our chart. So here you can see our input numbers are filled in, our output numbers are filled in. Now we have three different pattern rules that we can get from this information. The first pattern rule is the pattern rule for the input. And if you're asked to find the pattern rule for the input, you're just looking at the input numbers. You're looking down the column. So pretend all the other numbers aren't there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's your pattern. So our pattern rule from the input is to start at 1 and increase by 1 each time. Pretty simple. The pattern rule for the output, again, we're going to look just at our output numbers. So looking at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We can't just say increase by 1 each time because that would say we'd be starting at 1 pretty much. So we need to say start at 7, increase by 1 each time. That gives us the pattern rule for the output. Now, the third rule is the rule that relates the input to the output. So how are these numbers related? Why do, why does one, what does 1 have to do with 7? And that's where the number in our input-output machine comes in. So this is what is being acted on the input to get the output. So the rule that relates the input to the output is add 6 to the input to get the output. There's our three rules. Input rule, start at 1, add 1 each time. Output rule, start at 7, add 1 each time. Pattern rule that relates the input to the output, add 6 to the input. And that's going to work for any input number. And that's just basically an introduction to input-output machines. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, here's another one, a little more sophisticated, a little more advanced. I don't know if this will work for you or not. And you, this is a long one. This is 11 minutes long, so I'll just show a little bit of it. But if you want to learn about this and you're still having trouble understanding this, go ahead and look In at this In this video, one. we're going to take a look at how video. you find a role. Now today's goal, and I want you to write this down in your notes, you, you want to be able to look at an input and output table and find the rule for the pattern that you see in that table. Now here's a $100,000 tip that I want you to write down in your notes. It's important to know that if the numbers increase, the operations can only be multiplication or addition. What I mean by increase, that means the numbers are getting bigger. And also if the numbers decrease, the operations can only be either division or subtraction. So I want you to write this down in your notes. Now the key tip for this for the day, okay, I want you to write this down in your notes as well, that in order for something to be a rule, it must work for all of the pairs in the table. Okay, so that means you need to 
you can see the second key tip you want to try your rule on each input to make sure that it produces the correct output so we're not just finding the rule of the first two numbers and then we're saying that's the rule we need to be able to make sure that it produces the correct output for every single part of the table okay we're going to take a look at our first input and output table okay and what we need to do first of all is see that the input we can see we have three here then it is increasing to 15 now since it's increasing the 15 that means we have two options as far as operations it's either going to be multiplication or addition because the numbers are getting larger okay so we need to figure out what is happening to 3 in order to making it 15 okay so now I can add 12 okay to 3 that's gonna give me 15 or I could multiply by 5 okay I have two options here so add 12 or multiply by 5 okay so what I will do is to my next rule or my next input output if I add 12 to my 15 I'm sorry to my 5 that's gonna give me 17 and that does not give me 25 okay however if I were to multiply by 5 I know that does equal 25 so it seems like the rule is multiply by 5 however we're not just gonna stop there we're gonna keep on going if I multiply 8 by 5 I know that gives me the output of 40 okay which is the correct answer here and if I multiply my 10 by 5 and that's gonna give me the answer of 50 as well okay so I can see the role of multiplying by 5 works for each input and creating the correct output so if I multiply okay uh, we don't have time to watch all of this so let's go on to one more example I subscribe to these different ones I find them when I subscribe so I can find them more easily later a fourth grade flipped classroom hi boys and girls today we're gonna to be learning about functions so what I want you to do in box number two of your homework sheet we're gonna be going through a few new vocabulary words I'd like you to copy the words and their meanings into box two what is a function a function is a mathematical relationship that's shared between two sets of numbers. And we'll get some examples of those in just a moment. What is a rule? A rule describes the relationship. It's the explanation of what's happening in those two sets of numbers. So please take a moment and write those into section two of your homework sheet right now. Let's get into our first example. What we have here is called a function table. And it's a table set up of different sets of numbers. We have our input numbers and our output numbers. I like to think of function tables as a sort of machine, as a function machine. We put our input numbers into the machine, something's done to them, they're mixed all around, something's done mathematically to them, and then they pop out of our machine looking a little different. And our challenge, our job, is to figure out the rule what has happened to them as they're in this function machine. So let's take a look at our first example. Our first number of input is the number two. We put it into our function machine and it comes out looking like a number 12. So we have to ask. Again, we don't have time to look at all of these. So just remember that your students are gonna to have to set up a problem. They're gonna to have to be able to explain it to you. And in their groups, they are gonna come up with their table and they can leave it for another group to come up with their rule perhaps or they can come up with the rule and say it themselves as they make a chart or a poster with their rule. And of course, you're teaching them how to do that ahead of time and every group needs to come up with a different poster or a different, and a different rule in a different set of numbers. They're not solving, they're creating these. So I hope this helps and go ahead and feel free to try to search for these to get more information and I look forward to seeing your creativity in putting this lesson together.